Top of the afternoon to you boys and girls. We're at the Banshee in the shop for another little narrative session again. Today for your viewing pleasure we're going to compare and contrast an MS661C. So it's an Mtronic electronically controlled carburetor system versus uh, 395 XP Husqvarna. Uh, this basic design has been around since 92. The platform that the 661 is based on is the 064 that came out in about 84, but it's got some minor tweaks and electronic carburation. Uh, we're going to talk about all that as we go. Throwing out the disclaimers right off the bat. Narrative is going to be long, probably a little tedious if you're not a knuckle slash gearhead like myself. Hopefully you find it enjoyable if you are. The other type, um, my cue cards are down. I can't find my... Um, crib notes anywhere and my flash cards vaporize in the process I'm going to try to pull a lot of information out of my smaller than average size cranium please forgive me if and when I stammer my speech slurring it probably going to be a little bit out of the process so let's roll through outwardly they don't look anywhere near the same which we'd expect completely different manufacturers they're in the same basic class which is sweet um, I don't know where to even start uh, Total Husky style air cleaner cover um, full of nuts and bolts. We're not going to like monkey with that too much. This is the stock version. They do make an aftermarket version called the Max Flow. I always call these the whole shot. Uh, oiled uh, foam element, which is really sweet. Standard cage comes inside those. You have to watch the, you don't get a perforation. You'll suck a lot of crap through there. Um, if we look at the stock system, car box cover on the 661, rubber lip, cartridge style element um, uh, interacts with this flange right here. The nut is a quarter twist nut on the little tine that sticks up here. They get weak from vibration. There's a lot of scuttlebutt about them passing particulates. That system's a better situation. Um, it actually has an oil base, a uh, nice oil um, residual film right here. Even if it gets a little bit loose, we're still going to be uh, trying to catch some particulates. We're going to upgrade this um, system. We're going to use a screw-on style. We might look at that a little bit closer later on when we actually get it done. Infomercial time. This saw is my personal saw. It'll be for sale middle of July or something. We're going to probably reshape the combustion chamber on that saw, do the flow tricks, and uh, insanewise it and they already respond well to the insanitization process. They actually kind of turn into a beast of a saw. So if we look at the pull starter covers, recoil assembly, um, quite a bit different. Metal versus plastic, quite a bit bigger. Way more capability for flowing cool air through here. Way more ability than this one, which these saws were having a problem overheating. We'll look at the cylinder and there'll be no reason to wonder why that is. Um, if we look at the clutch cover, we see it's got the outward cant. It's got a little bit of a curve now to it. It won't made up with the uh, earlier 660 style. Uh, they skeletonized the dogs to make them lighter, I guess. Um, it's a lot smaller dust flap. This is going to be catching uh, material and crap. Uh, probably going to be wooden up, but it's got a pretty good distance here, which is really sweet. Um, the Husqvarna version, this has been around since 92, hasn't changed much. The mechanism for controlling the chain brake, you can see the band is all inside. The dust flap is puny. You don't want to be like throwing your chain too much, but they do have some nice bar guides that are metal, both inner and outer. So yes, folks, that's an innie and an Audi. If you look at the handlebars, uh, they're a little bit taller. But we do have this extra little piece of uh, radiator hose that helps with catching the chain, which is nice. Um, 395s are a little bit taller. Um, they're, I don't know, depending. They're maybe inch, three quarters of an inch, but they're a lot more narrow. I'm hoping that you can see that. Um, they're inch, inch and a half more narrow. The platform of the 395 is really narrow, which is nice allows you to get that weight in next to you because you're generally running nose with a long bar. Um, this five bolts, this thing falls off in your hand, which is sweet. 
you look at the 661, they actually have a forward cant compared to the 660, which is nice. They're spring mounted now, the 661. They have this little apparatus in the front, which holds the front spring mount. Um, and a little foam piece, which we'll look at the cases in a second. Two bolts go, they run parallel with the line of the tank, a little bit more separated, probably a little bit stronger, but as a word to the wise, don't bend these, you won't like replacing them, it's a pain in the rear. So if we look at the cases underneath real quick, we see that you can see the recess right here, at least I'm hoping you can see the recess right here, where the little foam thing goes in and the nuts up underneath there, You, it's a pain to get those apart. Um, air cleaner cover, kind of talked about that. Here's the cylinder cover, uh, one screw's holding this on now, and you can see, yeah, we got a little custom rubber thing in here. We're going to be uh, plugging off the um, decompression relief valve. We're taking that out. We're going to plug that hole, which is sweet, So, but I don't prefer the one screw type situation. Uh, the Husky's a little bit different much longer cylinder cover um, it's pretty narrow three screws hold it on which is nice if you look at the Husqvarna you can see the air horn coming up through this is what it looks like essentially when it's bolted up um, flock style which is standard Husky um, the air horn is kind of a velocity stack concept um, except it's got a little bit of a well it's got a 90 degree bend which doesn't help with performance but it works pretty good. It's pretty smooth in there. We saw that the still basically comes out of the air cleaner pretty much a straight shot in the carburetor. So if we look at the carburetors for a second, 19 millimeter Venturi. This one is off to 395. Um, it does have stops. Uh, well, it used to anyway. Um, 18 millimeter Venturi. Uh, they came with Tillotsons. Now they're sporting Walbro. This is actually a Walbro carburetor electronically metered fuel system based off the speed of the crank. Um, if we look at the coil for a second, it does have two poles, but we will look at the flywheel. It actually has two magnets, so it's monitoring the speed of the crank. Um, in comparison to the 461, it's a three-pole system. That's how they do the limit. Um, they, this is a limited coil in the 461. Um, limited coil as well in the 661. The husk barn has got the same old, oh, uh, and there's that inner bar plate. Same basic unlimited coil that's been around since the 92 version came out. So if we look at the intake manifolds, we see a nice big open hole, smooth as silk, straight shot going into the back of the cylinder. If we look at the still version, we see that it has, and I'm hoping you can see this, um, has some little pyramid shaped rough patch there's like a patch that runs kind of in a circular fashion um, those are for roughing up the airflow I would imagine possibly to get atomization we already mentioned atomization is supposed to happen when the pistons going up the charge starts to move around a whole bunch as it's compressing in the combustion chamber that's where you get your turbulence um, but we noticed that it's not actually a full circle. It is full circle what comes into the cylinder, which is nice. Uh, circles flow air a little bit better. I prefer them as well. If we look, let's look at the pistons real quick. We'll just compare 660 on the right versus a 661 on the left. You can see that they use the same 12 millimeter pin. Deck height's way different in the 661. Um, they've increased it by quite a little bit. Um, overall height of the pistons relatively close. They're best basically exact. It's the deck height and that's the center line of the wrist pin um, to the top edge of the outside of the piston. That's your deck height. Um, 56 millimeter piston, 54 millimeter piston in the 066. The 395 has a 56 millimeter piston as well. If we kind of get a relatively close idea, the deck height's pretty much the same it might be just a it's pretty close to dead nuts on but you can see the piston in the 395 is a lot bigger um, it's a lot heavier it has a 38 millimeter stroke versus a 37 millimeter stroke um, so that gives you 91 cc's versus 93.4 
in the 395. If we take a quick little look at the wrist pins, you can see a lot more mass associated with the 395. It's a lot taller. Um, it's not tapered inside. It'd be sweet if they did some of that um, as well. Decompression valves relatively close to the same. Um, we don't need them. Uh, as a side note, here's the intake. Uh, they call this an insulator block. Actually, this is from a 394 round to oblong. We mentioned that the one on 395 is a straight shot. We kind of looked at the pistons a little bit. If we check out the cylinder, um, we'll look at the 395 for a second. It's got a really small start to the transfer port um, system. Both sides are the same. Um, it's actually kind of small. The transfer ports themselves are relatively small for the size. They take a pretty good round hole and they spread it out pretty wide in a short distance. I'm not a fan of that short distance having such a change in shape myself. Um, the exhaust port isn't that wide but it's pretty open. Um, combustion chamber is relatively small. Like I said, this is based off of 92 saw. Um, lots of thin surface area for cooling. Um, bulletproof design if you take care of it. Um, if we look at the 661, uh, one of the things we talked about before was the spring mount. Comes off the handlebar, mounts right here. Uh, we lose a lot of surface area for cooling on the fins with the 661. Much smaller exhaust opening, but a much different shape. Um, relatively close to the same on the intake side. If you look inside the 661, we've already discussed that the transfer ports um, actually are um, inverted. They come, they're shaped like this. Um, the 660 was shaped like this. Um, they're trying to keep the exhaust um, free of hydrocarbons as they can by not letting it get out too quick. Um, nice big round hole, pretty ovalized. I actually prefer that. Um, fairly wide, but really uh, not very far the opening, It's but it's pretty wide, so you get to dump the gases pretty quick but they really increase the combustion chamber size. I think we mentioned in another video, everybody recognizes that name right there. I don't know if we recognize that name right there. I'm not even sure if we can see that in the video. My light's not so awesome in my shop. I apologize for that. So we've kind of, oh, uh, if we look at the, the cool thing about the 661 is it's really, um, they really thought about the wind and it, that's what you call because it's happening so fast when these saws turn the kind of RPMs that they turn they're actually the flow is happening so fast at 10, 12, 13,000 RPMs it's actually a concept of a wind where it's flowing through they uh, completely redesigned the cases to work well with the start of the transfer ports which we didn't check that out relatively small for such a big saw but it sits right on top of the recess in the cases you can see um, pretty sweet the piston straddles this little flange in the back as it goes down um, as the rod goes on the front side the skirt goes on the back side and we're trying to direct the flow through the front to help with that wind concept the 395 is old school but it's pretty small actually the volume right below the transfer ports there's a little bit so it'll get rolling um, I will mention that the crank came out of the 288 when they redesigned this saw um, they didn't make a new crank they just pulled the crank from the 288 so that's just an interesting side note it does have a really nice long rod though so you got good dwell time um, you want more dwell time that gives you better uh, actuation of the um, burn effect on the top of the piston which is sweet um, so we've kind of covered a lot of, oh the exhaust if you look at the exhaust in the th this is um, off of a U saw that I have in the shop I can't show you how small the hole is coming out but it's only about that big uh, it's in between these uh, pretty small relief um, but it's pretty open but it's got a pretty small hole for dumping the exhaust if we look at the 395 I'm hoping we can see that hole in there. It's about the size of nickel, but pretty choked down, and it has to get into this part that they have brazed in here. It's like it's kind of open. It's like a collector, open inside, necks it down to that hole, pretty choked down. These saws don't run very well, stock at all, in my humble opinion, but 
uh, that's just my opinion. Um, I'm not sure what else we need to discuss in these two particular saws. The 395 is a known quantity. You can control the needles on the carburetor. It's a beast when you insanoize it. Um, you could pull a 50 inch bar on one of these. It's not quite like what you'd get out of a 2100, but they will sing a 42 with authority. Uh, kind of a new kit on the block. We've been working on these saws. Uh, this particular saw, like I said, we're going to reshape the combustion chamber since the chamber itself is so big. Um, we're going to run it against probably just the standard Insanewise 395. This one, we're going to supersize the um, 661. We're going to enhance the flow and we're going to bump the compression. So it's going to be an interesting grudge match when all this is said and done. Hopefully we'll be able to get that video up and rolling pretty soon. Um, one thing I will talk about is the A, B, and B, and A, uh, we see an A, B on the piston. Um, we don't see too many B pistons anymore. Um, a, B as well. These measure exactly the same. Um, we have an A cylinder and a B cylinder and a 395 choices. Uh, 1.85 tolerance. This one comes in at 2.4 because it's a B cylinder fitted with an AB piston. 661. Um, I haven't seen enough of these yet to know what they've got going on, to be perfectly honest. Um, we've been into quite a few, but I haven't really had like three or four here at the same time to check them out. Um, that time is coming shortly, so we will be doing that. We check the bore gauge in there, um, which I'm pretty lucky to have a really nice instrument here. Uh, there's only two ten thousandths of variance anywhere in the cylinder, which is really sweet. Um, that means it's pristine in there. Um, standard operating procedure, I'm hoping you can see that name. Molly does their top ends. Um, this is an Italian company building the cylinder. I'm not sure if they're getting blanks that are cast and they're uh, machining the still machining the pistons themselves or if the Italians are doing the whole top end assembly. I think I mentioned in another video uh, those people have been doing cylinder assemblies since the mid 80's that I know about. Uh, metal flywheel in the 661 which I really uh, appreciate. You can get more low end grunt out of the saw especially since we got a really relatively short stroke. We're kind of going to that over square uh, race application style engine with a shorter stroke and a much bigger bore. Um, I don't know if you can see the rod. The rod in the 390 five is a lot longer um, so you get uh, more dwell time which we already kind of discussed metal flywheel again I appreciate the extra weight spring mounted is the 395 it's been that way since its inception um, outboard clutch which nobody really appreciates that uh, is a log cutter because invariably if you cut much you're going to get hung up once in a while um, the chain catcher system is standard Husqvarna um, I prefer the still style myself. They actually uh, work through the dogs. Um, the chain catcher has a little... You can see we're, um, we've used this saw a little bit, uh, checking it out, pretty sweet, but the chain catcher system um, has a little hole actually manufactured into the dog itself, so it's a much more sanitary system. Um, fairly easy to replace pretty sweet operation that I like I said I prefer that chain catcher system uh, much better myself um, I think that's about it for this session we've kind of gone round and round um, known quantity they're kind of a beast when you insanoize them the 661's actually do well also um, we're going to check this out here in an upcoming video please stay tuned Thank you for watching this session. Hopefully it was informative and enjoyable. And have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth.